What's going on, growers? It's James Frigioli coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to share with you three ways to safeguard your seedlings from failure. Let's go! Spring is finally here. The fruit trees have started to flower. The birds are starting to chirp and best of all, our seeds have sprouted and are now growing. Me and Tuck are so excited for this year. And even though the garden looks a bit empty right now, in a short amount of time, this place is going to be loaded with food. The thing is though, if we don't remain vigilant, our spring bliss can quickly turn into spring woes. A few years ago, after working in the garden, me and Tuck headed inside for the night. At the time, the brassicas we were growing looked so great. I mean, the young seedlings were showing an incredible amount of growth and we were excited, looking forward to a beautiful harvest. But the next morning we woke up to our devastation, almost all of our brassica plants had been eaten down to the soil level by a groundhog. I mean, that was pretty upsetting at the time. Fortunately, I had the little boss with me and we captured the groundhog and then relocated him to a different area. But from that day forth, I always promised myself that I would have multiple lines of defense against pests. I wasn't going to rely simply on a regular garden fence and some chicken wire. That's why I want to get into the first way to safeguard your seedlings from failure, protect them. Now I take extra precautions, even before transplanting my seedlings out. So when getting my seedlings acclimated to the outside temperatures, if I'm going to leave them overnight for 24 hours, I make sure to cover them with this right here. I call this my seedling box. I built it out of scrap 2x8s and some hardware cloth. It's super simple, but it's super effective. So what I do is, if I'm going to go to sleep, I'll come out, I'll drop this over the top. It's specifically designed to fit four of my trays. Drop it right over the top, just like this. Then I can go to sleep knowing that my seedlings are protected and I'm not gonna come out and wake up to all these things being eaten down by a rabbit or something. You probably noticed I've got some new merch on today. Me and Tuck just dropped this spring merch and we're really proud of the way it looks. It says gardening is life, that it has the flower of life on it. So we thought that whole idea and concept was unique and also a lot of fun. That's why we went with it. And I'm proud of the way they came out. I think it looks nice. If you wanna grab one, be part of Team Grow, check them out at jamesprigioni.com. Another way I protect my seedlings from failure is by using a raised bed covering. I wrote myself a note in my garden journal years ago, and it says, if you want to sleep soundly and know everything will be okay, then every raised bed must be covered. And that's why I love these hinged hoop houses. They're simple, they're effective, and they're also multifunctional they protect your plants and your young seedlings in so many different ways. So if you want to keep the cold out or even, you know, speed up germination, you can use the plastic here. If you want to keep out pests, you can use insect netting. If you want to protect your plants from a late frost, then you can use a row cover. And even if you want to protect your plants from the sun when it gets super hot in the summer, you can use a shade cloth. Years ago, I had an issue growing peas as well. I couldn't figure out what was coming in and eating the plants just as they were sprouting. Then I realized it was the birds. They were swooping in and snacking on those young shoots just as they popped out of the ground. That doesn't happen anymore now that I have my pea boxes. I swear it's like the animals are always watching me. They know that this location has some of the best food around, especially being in a suburban setting. There's just not that many options for the critters. So they know they're going to get some incredibly tasty treats if they come to my place. And the squirrels, the birds, they've always got their eye on me. Whenever I go inside, it seems like they try to swoop in and grab some snacks. These pea boxes have made all the difference for me though, and it's a very simple construction. Similar to my seedling box. It's just a frame built out of some scrap wood. Then. I took some hardware cloth and wrapped it around three sides. Then on this front side, what I did was drape an insect netting over the front. This way I can just grab it and just lift it up and get access to my peas and any kinds of things. Then at the top, I left it open and I draped this insect netting over the top. But by the time the peas trellis to the top, I can just let them grow out because if the birds do swoop by and eat some of the leaves, it's fine because the plants are so established and they're already producing at that time. One way that I protect my young cucumber seedlings from the dreaded cucumber beetle is by spraying them with surround kaolin clay. What this does is it makes the cucumber beetles want to avoid the plants because the clay gums up the antenna of the cucumber beetles and it makes it hard for them to navigate. This is just clay, so it won't harm the beetles and it won't harm any other bugs, but it acts as a great form of protection for your young plants. These are just a few examples of how me and Tuck protect our seedlings. 
and we hope we gave you some different kinds of ideas. But the main thing is that you spend a good amount of time on protection. You already invested so much time in getting those seeds planted, having them grow. So if something happens like, uh, you know, an animal or a pest comes in, that could just erase all the work you did. So you put all that effort in to start it, make sure you put a good amount of effort into protecting it because I'm telling you, Everything out here wants some of those beautiful seedlings and that food because it's that good. The second way to safeguard your seedlings from failure is to prevent issues before they arise and become a problem. Look at Tuck back there just relaxing, hanging out. That's why he's the guardian of the garden. He's always keeping an eye on things. But one way that I prevent pests from becoming a problem in my garden and going after my seedlings is by companion planting in my raised beds. Let's pretend that we're a cabbage white butterfly and we're looking for some brassicas to lay our eggs on so our larvae can feed on the leaves. We see a 40 square foot bed and it's all brassicas, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli. That's going to be easy to identify and be a perfect spot to lay our eggs. But if that same bed was companion planted and Mixed within the cabbages, there was flowers, um, spinach, carrots. It's going to be a lot harder to identify where the cabbage is, and it's going to be tougher to, to find that spot and lay our eggs there. So that's why companion planting is so great. It helps confuse the pests, and it helps prevent some issues before they become a problem. If you find that your plants are already being attacked by pests, I suggest using a few sprays to prevent this issue from becoming a detrimental problem to your plants. One of the ones I love is cold pressed neem oil. This works great, it's organic, and it won't harm your plants. Just make sure you get the one with azadirectin in it because this is what's gonna actually fend off the pests and cause damage to them. If you find that cabbage worms or cabbage loopers are your problem, then I suggest using BT. This stuff works really well. It's organic and this is one of the main things that has taken my cabbage game from mediocre and spotty to consistent massive harvests because a few cabbage worms can cause detrimental damage to your young seedlings. Another way that I prevent problems from my young seedlings is by planting some varieties that are less susceptible to pests and disease. For instance, when it comes to cucumbers, you should plant some burpless varieties. These ones have low levels of cucurbitacin and cucurbitacin is the chemical compound found in cucumbers that makes them bitter but it's also what attracts the cucumber beetles so plant some burpless varieties to help you avoid the cucumber beetles choosing the right variety could also help to prevent you from dealing with disease issues for instance if late blight is a problem for your tomatoes then you should plant the cherry bomb tomato this one is resistant to late blight so what you should do is record in your journal any issues that you have this year then next year look for some varieties that are resistant to that issue this way you could prevent or avoid it instead of having to try and manage the issue if your seedlings are growing inside or in a greenhouse like monar you can't just take those seedlings and immediately transplant them out into the garden if you do those plants will go through an extreme amount of transplant shock and could possibly even die. Just think about the difference of the humidity, the temperature, and the amount of sun compared to inside or in a greenhouse as opposed to being outside in the regular conditions. So what you want to do is first harden your plants off before you bring them outside. Hardening off is essentially just getting your plants acclimated to the outdoor conditions slowly. This way they can take that gradual progression instead of having it all happen at once. So to do this, bring your plants outside on the first day in like a shady location for a few hours then bring them back in then as the days continue to progress bring them outside longer until they can grow well outside for at least 24 hours after this point you know your plants are hardened off so when you do transplant them into the garden they will continue to grow well instead of just like stopping growth or maybe even going backwards in growth we put all the time in we do not want that to happen the third way to safeguard your seedlings from failure is to optimize their health by creating an ideal growing environment when your seedlings can grow healthy, that leads to healthy plants, which leads to bigger harvests because healthy plants are less susceptible to pests and disease. There's a few things that I see new gardeners make the mistake of when growing their young seedlings. One is the importance of a light fan or breeze on those young seedlings to make sure that they grow stout and strong when they're just young plants. Also, maintaining the right air temperature will cause your seedlings to grow short and strong instead of being tall, weak, and spindly. So for example, tomatoes, they like to germinate at a soil temperature of around 75 to 85 degrees. But once those seedlings come out of the ground, you want the air temperature to be about, say, mid 60s to 70 degrees. If it starts getting much warmer than 70 degrees, then your tomatoes will start to get tall, weak, and spindly to try to like cool themselves off instead of staying short and strong if you can keep the right temperature. 
So what I like to do to maintain a consistent temperature in my greenhouse is I have a radiating heater, heater set at a temperature that kicks on once it goes below that temperature. I also have an air conditioner in there that kicks on once it exceeds a certain temperature. So that helps keep me in a consistent range of temperature in the greenhouse without having to like run around and go crazy because it's all automated. And this is what causes good consistent seedlings to grow, to be strong and to be healthy. I know it's probably obvious, but the most important factor that leads to short, strong plants is to have access to good light. If your plants don't have access to good light, what will happen is they'll get tall in search for that light. They're kind of like looking around for it. So this year when my brassicas first started, we had about three days of uh, just straight rain, so there wasn't much sun. So that caused the brassicas to get a little leggier than they usually do, but they still didn't get too uh, weak. They're strong and they're still stout because what I did was I kept the temperatures at the right uh, rain in, within the right range and I also use the fan on them to help make them relatively strong so they can deal with a breeze and to kind of mimic the wind outside. Another way to optimize the growth of your young seedlings is to make sure you're giving them the correct amount of water. What you don't want to do is overwater the seedlings and have the soil be waterlogged and super saturated or what that will do is cause damping off or it will slow down the growth of the seedlings because the roots don't have access to oxygen. They need oxygen to breathe. That's one reason that I like having the fan and a light breeze in the greenhouse as well because that consistent movement of air will make it so the soil doesn't stay wet and damp for too long a period of time. When I start my seedlings, I prefer using a high quality mix like happy frog soil. This way I don't have to add a lot of nutrition or really any nutrition while my seedlings are still young. As long as I transplant them into a larger pot if they're starting to get really big for their cell. So I know the happy frog soil isn't cheap and it's not really like easy to find and it's not really accessible, but any good quality potty mix will do. I think it's worth it to invest a little bit more in a good potty mix when your seeds are young because these seedlings are really going to form the foundation of your whole garden. So if you want to have healthy plants and get big harvests, it's really important to make sure you build on a strong foundation. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck couldn't be more excited for the fact that spring is finally here. Even though the garden doesn't look like much right now, there seems like there's barely anything growing. It's still so exciting to see some of the flowers starting to open up on the trees, the seedlings growing. It's uh, It just gets us amped that this time of year has finally come. We waited all winter for this. And we think it's going to be cool to see the contrast of the garden looking so asleep, dead and dormant right now. Then in you know a few weeks from now, we're just going to be pulling out crazy amounts of food. <sighs> Tuck's going to be digging carrots. I'm going to be grabbing lettuces and br uh, brassicas, cabbages. We can't wait. We wanted to thank one of our new channel members for joining the team grow. Martha Mayberry, thanks for being part of the team. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing back here. We also wanted to mention to grab some of the new spring merch at jamesprigioni.com. We think it looks great. I'm really happy with the way it came out and I'm happy with the overall message of it. So we had a blast out here. We hope you got some real value out of this video and we hope that these ideas give you, uh, you know, some good ways to safeguard your seedlings and you don't go through some of the same problems we went through in the past. This way you can get that great consistent growth which leads to beautiful harvests Nothing like getting the harvests. James and Tuck will be back at you again real soon. We out.